wondrous power of steam and steel, taking a treasure store of New England merchandise into the night. The night freight calls our attention to an element of time, the bright time of day, and here's the dark time of night. Railroading is on a 24-hour schedule. Despite the elements, and never mind the weather, be it fair or stormy, hail, sleet or snow, the night freight must go through. in the caboose keeps a record of all the cars. And the night freight seems to sing a song of work, a song with the refrain, every day, 24 hours a day. The steam locomotive leaves the train. From Boston and from Springfield to New Haven, the motive power is provided by superheated steam. Then for the remainder of the run, the energy to drive the wheels is provided by dynamos. The electric locomotive is a thing of streamlined efficiency, a monarch of high tension. Electricity has been a comparatively recent story in American railroading. It began in 1895 on the New Haven Railroad, which pioneered in overhead high-tension lines. And now the clipper goes speeding under electrical power. We're in a new world of railroading, a realm where a hundred thunderbolts of Jupiter are harnessed to turn the wheels of trains. The Yankee Clipper, now electrified, approaching the environs of New York, which means it will soon go underground because the tracks for miles proceed beneath traffic and beneath buildings of the metropolis. We pass into a subterranean world, a signal tower underground. Here, more than 600 trains a day are guided in and out over the 107 tracks of Grand Central Terminal. 302. Put them on the outbound tower, see? 29 up by. 23 to way D. 23 to the way D. Track G to track 40 with the clipper. G to 40 with the clipper. machine bound for Rio. From the flat car that brought it to New York, the railroad delivers the consignment on a lighter to its berth aboard the ship. The railroad owns 42 of those ungainly barges with the big derricks. They're strong and sturdy. Some of them can be loaded with 500 tons of freight. <laughs> the tugboat? It's also railroad owned. The railroad owns 13 tugs. They're famous throughout New York Harbor. The railroad owns and operates many other pieces of marine equipment. And so the case of machinery is on its way to be stowed aboard ship and then south into the tropics past the equator to be put into service in the land of the Amazon. New England machines to modernize latitudes of jungle green.
This is a water gateway for the interchange of freight cars between railroads. New York, the East River. When freight cars from New England are destined for points outside of New England, they may come here. They're to go over the lines of other railroads. And how is the transfer affected? We see a water phase of operation that you might not readily associate with a railroad. A car ferry, and the dock apron can be moved up and down to follow the tide. The car float arrives with cars from the New Jersey side. They're from points south and west and are destined for New England. Raw materials for the industries of New England. Those brought previously into New England. On the other side of the river, they will roll similarly on to the tracks of the railroad that is to take them on to complete their journey to some point in this immense country of ours. New England carload lots bound for everywhere. This is a New Haven rail gateway up in New York State. It's another point where railroads meet and where freight cars are interchanged. Those are cars loaded with merchandise for New England, raw materials and perishable food, packing house and dairy products from Chicago and Kansas City, oranges and grapefruit from California and Arizona, onions from Texas, meat from Sioux City. It's early morning at a New England city. Freight cars full of fresh food. The beginning of the day, the right time for food distribution. After cars are unloaded, they are pulled into the yards for inspection. Here a string of them are going to the yards to meet the keen eye of the inspector. Cars are carefully inspected at regular intervals. When something wrong is found, the car is tagged. Bad order, familiarly known as B.O. The car then goes to B.O. Brown's yard. Those are his real initials, appropriately. In the yard, other nation can match. Such is the larger meaning of these scenes of a great American railroad at work. The human factor is the true source of all the mechanical wonders. It is as New Haven President and railroad practices have made possible this railroad's record of safety, efficiency, and progress.